As we continue to learn about rangelands and the animals that occupy rangelands today, we're going to focus on what kinds of nutrients and energy animals need from the land. What is their demand for uh, nutrients and energy on rangelands? And this is Karen Launchbaugh at the University of Idaho in the Integrated Rangeland Management class. So let's start with what are animal requirements? What do they need to grow and reproduce and on rangelands and survive? A series of requirements. We're going to start with maintenance. That's the bottom. That's every animal needs to have that just to survive. And then growth and lactation, which is milk production. And then if they can meet those and they might reproduce and there might be energy needed for levels of activity out on the range and or to combat and deal with environmental conditions. We're going to go through each of these one at a time. Let's start with maintenance. Uh, maintenance is a um, a base it equals the amount of just basal metabolism to just that pumping of blood and and movement of nutrients and and resources throughout the body that's required to just stay alive it's also a small amount of movement an animal needs to move around and harvest for foraging so either to escape predators or to do foraging the animal does need to move in order to survive so maintenance is basically the the minimum that an animal needs to survive on a yearly basis however it's the greatest amount of energy that the animal needs. Throughout the whole year, it needs most of its energy is just going to survival. So maintenance is that survival level. So maintenance depends on quite a few things. For example, the size of the animal. As we learned from earlier lectures on different kinds of animals, larger animals have a lower base of metabolic rate as a percentage of their body size than smaller animals. So small animals like rodents and rats and mice they, they, they're very quick, they require a lot of energy per unit body weight, whereas elephants uh, require much less energy per unit of body weight. Age also changes the amount that animals need for maintenance throughout their life. Young animals need more energy than older animals, again, per unit of body weight. So for example, here's um, uh, some data that were, ta were um, gathered for, for sheep, domestic sheep at birth. Uh, young lambs require 132 kilocals per meter squared. Just five weeks later, it's half that, 68 kilocals per meter squared. Six years later, when they're mature sheep, they require even less energy at about 52 kilocals. So young animals under um, six months do require a lot of energy, and they can be permanently stunted if they're subjected to severe nutrition, undernutrition at that point of their age. It's also one of the reasons that animals get fatter as they get older, animals, including humans, that as we get older, um, the amount of energy that we use in just staying alive goes down, so more of that energy goes into fat and to, to just the, our weight. Another interesting point is that domestic animals um, have a little different re requirement than native. So because we selected domestic animals to produce meat, milk, and fiber, they have a higher basal metabolic rate than native animals, which were, um, were selected to survive um, the conditions of, of nature. So animals such as deer can actually reduce their basal metabolic rate during the winter. It can change from season to season, whereas domestic animals have slightly higher levels of maintenance and it doesn't change much from season to season. What else do animals use energy and nutrients for? Well, next would be growth. This is a really important energy demand, especially for young animals and animals that are gestating because the fetus inside of them is requiring energy for growth. It's 10 to 15 uh, percent increase requirements above maintenance, especially in that last trimester for, for pregnant females. An even greater need is once that young is born, uh, the females have great need for lactation. It's the greatest energy requirement um, above maintenance for, for mature females. It's 25 to 40 percent above maintenance to produce milk. So animals, uh, you, um, ewes and cattle and elk and deer, when they produce young, they have automatically an increased demand for energy because of lactation. Reproduction needs can also be significant the last tri trimester of pregnant females as discussed above, but also males have significant needs for reproduction during the breeding season. Some wildlife, for example, can um, really uh, bulk up. Uh, elk, male elk, for example, really need to bulk up in order to cover the ground and protect their harem while they are uh, in a reproductive mode. Uh, we can see very lo uh, significant losses of um, weight and condition on bulls during the breeding season on ca beef cattle bulls. Other uh, aspects that need energy uh, and nutrients are level of activity. 
interestingly, there's 15% greater energy required for standing than just laying down. So anytime an animal even sits or stands, it requires more energy. Um, 40 to 46% uh, of energy for range that for animals that are out on the range, as opposed to stall-fed animal, which is why we put animals in feedlots when we're feeding them. You know, part of it's convenience, but also we don't want them walking off weight that otherwise would become uh, meat or fat for to, to be sold or eaten. So animals are confined when we're trying to convert more of what they eat into their body mass. Environmental conditions can also have a significant effect on how much energy animals need. Cold energy requirements during um, the winter require much more energy for maintenance and for growth. Uh, I, if you've ever fed cattle in cold environments, you'll just know that when the temperature goes way, way down, like below zero, animals just have, they're just hungry. They just eat ravenish, ravenishly. They eat a lot of hay and really sit at the bunk much longer. Hot environment also require energy for perspiration and for cooling systems. But another interesting effect of heat is that it suppresses appetite. So even though they might have more energy demand, it does suppress appetite. So if you put all that together, here's a graph that we're going to see several times. This is the, the yearly uh, change in demand for nutrients and energy of a pregnant female on rangeland, whether that be a cow, sheep, elk, deer. They start out in the winter with just basal metabolic needs. And depending on how cold it is, that would determine how much energy and they need to heat themselves. As they get so that calf or lamb inside of them starts to grow, they start to get more of energy demand. In the last trimester, we talked about an increased energy. We don't see really significant energy until right after birth when the animal starts to lactate. Then we see high, huge energy demands. That decreases and decreases throughout the season as the mother uh, tends to produce less and less milk and the young tend to eat more and more and get more of their energy from their own foraging. If uh, in the case of cattle or sheep, we, we remove, we wean the calves and they um, th then we see a radical drop in the need of uh, that the female has for lactation. Uh, in wild animals, they tend to sort of self wean. The, anim the mother will uh, tend to produce less and less milk until the point where the, the young animal just weans itself. So it's kind of a self weaning procedure. And then after that, an animal goes down to that maintenance level in fall. So you see that change in energy demand throughout the year that we'll see later in this lecture. Okay, let's think about these principles in our own life. Think about what you have learned and how you could use that to either gain or lose weight. I don't know if you feel that you're overweight or underweight or just right, but what do you know if you wanted to change your weight? So based on activity or conditions that create energy demand, what could you do if you wanted to lose weight? Well, first you could start lactating. Now that doesn't work very well for most people, but if you are a lactating female or if you've gone through that in your life, you'll, you'll know that w once you've had a baby and you start lactating, that can be quite an energy demand and, and young mothers often lose weight quite quickly uh, because of that energy demand. So it's not necessarily something you can do to lose weight, but it might explain why some animals do lose weight in their life. The most common one we do is to just stand and just to exercise. Don't stand or sit, but take the stairs, take the elevator, run, walk, swim, work. Anything that you do that requires energy for that activity or that exercise will then be energy that doesn't go to fat or to just body mass. Another one we underestimate often is um, to stay cold or hot. So keep your house or apartment um, at cold temperatures so that you spend more time outside where it's cooler or just, or that the temperature in your house is cooler. That, that requires your body to use more energy. And that energy that's used to heat your body is energy that's not being used to put fat on your body. So those are just a few simple ones, thinking about exercising and using temperature to your advantage. That's a very brief overview of how animals use energy demand. And then next we're gonna go into how do we match that demand with the supply in the forage.